Hi, I'm Lizzie Ingram, a PhD researcher based at UCL. In England, one in four people live with multiple chronic health conditions. Combined, these can have a huge impact on a person's life. So to give an example, let's take a look at this hypothetical person called Annie. Five years ago, Annie injured her back at work. The pain of her injury meant Annie struggled to get about and subsequently developed depression. Annie's doctor prescribed antidepressants and recommended she exercise to improve her back. However, because of her injury, Annie found exercising difficult and in fact the medication caused her to gain weight, which made it even harder for Annie to exercise. As a result, she developed further chronic conditions including diabetes. So the issues described here are common for many people, both in England and globally. Multiple chronic conditions can influence one another, impact one's health and social well-being, and make it difficult for people to benefit from recommended treatments. Now, previous research suggests that if Annie had lived in a deprived area of England, she would be more likely to have multiple chronic conditions, as well as more likely to develop these conditions at a younger age. However, beyond looking at how deprived someone's home area is, we don't know much more about how the social circumstances people live in influence if and how they develop multiple chronic conditions. We also don't know how we can better use information about people's social circumstances to inform how we provide better health and care services. So my PhD will address some of these gaps. So far, I have reviewed the literature to examine how people's social circumstances are associated with the presence of multiple chronic conditions. I have found that there was very little research looking at how household level characteristics, for example household income, are associated with developing multiple chronic conditions. This is despite previous work showing that households share similar health behaviours, such as what they eat and whether they smoke, social characteristics, and are even more likely to develop the same conditions over time. So my second study will use a big data set to address some of these gaps. In my third PhD study, I have looked at how we can better use information about people's social circumstances to inform the design and delivery of the health and care services they need. Last year I spoke to 20 senior health and care leaders about how they use resident social information to make decisions about services. I also asked leaders about what helps and what prevents them from using these type of information for making these decisions. I am currently working with practice partners to develop the recommendations from my study findings and implement these findings into practice. Thank you for listening.